Hi, so in the previous video we added government spending and taxation to our intertemporal choice model and in this video we're going to look at what happens when we change these policy variables so we have a change in government spending. How does that affect our goods market equilibrium? So let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do is look at what happens when we have a permanent change in government spending. So we change our government spending. I'm going to assume that we actually have an increase in government spending. So I will just put this as an increase. So a permanent increase in government spending, but we have assumed in the previous video that we have a balanced budget. So this increase in government spending is going to come with an identical increase in lump sum taxation. So by increasing government spending, we have to finance this and we've assumed a balanced budget. So we finance this through taxation. So let's draw our aggregate supply and aggregate demand curves on this diagram. We know that our aggregate demand slopes downwards. We'll call this Y1D. And very similar to in the past, this, this curve depends on the interest rate, but of course we have that on the y-axis. And it depends on the present value of income of consumers and a number of other things. Although what we can also write this um, aggregate demand relation as is, is equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending. Although I haven't really been subscripting this with the time thing here, this should really be uh, subscripted by ones because we're looking at aggregate demand in period one. So consumption one, investment one, and government spending one. Okay, so that's our aggregate demand. We also have aggregate supply function, and where these are equal, we get goods market equilibrium. And aggregate supply depends on our productivity parameters, our interest rate and our relative wage rate as we've had in the previous videos however again this all this fancy stuff isn't really going to matter for us in this video because we're just changing government spending the sort of idea we can get from these terms is that uh, our aggregate supply relation depends on our labor that is being supplied and our labor that is being used in equilibrium so that we kind of get that fa that feeling from this relative wages term but when we factor in government spending and taxation we're really just thinking about how this affects our uh, decisions with regard to how much labor we use in the economy but we will get to that so we have here our original equilibrium always right on the original y1 star and interest rate star, R1 star. So then we can see how this changes with an increase in government spending. So the initial effect we're going to have on government spending is that we increase G. So we are going to be increasing this term here in our aggregate demand relation. It's directly there, so it's a direct effect. We shift our aggregate demand curve out to the right. So that's Y1D1, we'll call it. And we shift that by a change in government spending. That's very nice, but we do have to finance this increase in government spending, and we are immediately in this period financing it through an increase in lump sum taxation. So what we find actually is that this increase in government spending is then indirectly offset by the fact that we have to increase taxes by the exact same amount. How does this increase in taxes factor into our aggregate demand relation? Well, we can see that this aggregate demand function is dependent on our present value of income. And as we said in the previous video, if you increase your lump sum taxation, you are effectively this is equivalent to decreasing somebody's income or decreasing their wealth by this same amount of taxation. So we're going to reduce consumption and it's going to exactly offset this increase in government spending for a permanent shock. So we shift our uh, aggregate demand curve right the way back to where it started and we're back to square one. However, we have a further effect 
of this change in taxation and this comes in in the supply curve and I'm not going to go over the exact details of this again as I did this in the previous video where I said that when we increase lump sum taxation what we are effectively doing is decreasing I'll write this down we increase lump sum taxation this is effectively it's not exactly the same but we can view it as the same as just decreasing an individual's uh, wealth or their income uh, I will very roughly draw this diagram just to remind you where we had say consumption and labor and we had indifference curves and we had this budget constraints here and we had some optimal consumption and optimal labor and if we increase lump sum taxation we're effectively just shifting this budget constraint to the right which here is a negative impact because we're in consumption and labor space and then we optimize with respect to this new uh, budget constraint and we're here this decreases consumption and it increases our labor supplied out to this L1 star we can call it uh, that is very rough check out the previous video for the proper in-depth analysis shall we say uh, but as you can see this increases labor supply so that will mean that we have a shift to the right of our supply curve if we increase our supply of labor in the economy we are going to increase our output because labor produces output in a positive way so we shift out our supply curve to here and now we have a new a new supply curve however we are not we're still not done and the reason we are still not done is because we have had a permanent change in government spending and taxation which means that we shouldn't be affecting our intertemporal choices in this model what so we should at the end of the day when all said is done have the same level of interest rate because we have a permanent change and so nothing's changing across periods so our our interest rate which is effectively our what we say is the price of consumption in different periods the price of consuming in period one we can borrow and save at this rate to move our consumption and income from one period to the other if we have a permanent change in government spending this shouldn't change our choice over consumption over different points in time so we should be here and how can we explain the fact that we should be here well in fact we can explain it through the fact that we have here increased our labor so we have increased our labor which means we get some wage for this and we're actually increasing our present value of income through this effect through increasing our labor we, we did decrease our present value income through taxation, but we react to that by increasing our labor supply. So we have a second shift to our demand curve, and we have to draw this very carefully such that it goes through the curve through this point. And so that's how we know the size of this shift, because we know that the interest rate should remain unchanged across periods for the reasons I've just outlined so this is our new equilibrium where we have our output let's say y2 star so that is our impact of a permanent change in government spending I will do this in thick to just highlight where our curves end up we end up on these two blue curves our supply shifts to the right and our demand overall shifts to the right it, we shifted it right then left then right again and so our overall effects again in blue nice and thick is we increase our output in period one and we keep our interest rates the same so again permanent shocks are not going to affect our intertemporal decisions our supply shifts to the right because people work more due to the increase in lumps and taxation causing an income effect which causes individuals to work more and demand shifts by the same amount as this shift because we have a permanent effect and so we should have uh, the interest rate staying the same that's why we 
do have a shift in the demand as well as supply by the same distance such that the interest rate stays the same. So this basically says in the, our neoclassical model that we do not have neutral fiscal policy. Our fiscal policy does do something, it increases our output, even if our fiscal policy, our increase in government spending, is exactly the same in every period and it's fully financed by tax. We are still increasing our uh, output in period one. So does this make people better off? Are we increasing people's welfare because we're increasing output? So surely we should just keep increasing government spending and taxing people more because this is going to keep increasing our output in the period. Well, in fact, this is not the case. And this is not the case because for, for the one thing, well, let's look in the bottom left-hand corner at this diagram I drew. And this is what individuals are actually changing. This is their consumption and labor choices. I wish I maybe drawn this a bit nicer, but you can see that in this diagram, we see that consumption falls and the labor increases. People supply more labor. And both of these are bad things for people. People want high consumption, but it has fallen, and people want to work less. They want more leisure time. So again, this is bad. So people's utility does actually fall, despite the fact that we have increased the overall output in the economy. So not necessarily a good thing to implement this policy. In reality, our government spending can actually have uh, productive effects. We could be increasing our marginal productivity of capital and increase utility by building things, as we said in the previous video, building parks and other things that people can enjoy. So this isn't necessarily true that this government spending will decrease utility, but in our model, that is what it says when we have a permanent increase in government spending. Okay, so we've looked at what happens when we have a permanent change in government spending. What now happens when we have a temporary change? And again, we're gonna look at a temporary increase in government spending. And this again has to be financed by an increase in taxation. And so although the increase in government spending is only in this period, we have assumed a balanced budget, so our increase in lump sum taxation does come in this period as well. We don't finance it by a change in taxes in the future. We are assuming that every period our increase or our total government spending is going to be the same as our total taxation. So let's jump straight into it. Well, our initial effect of increasing government spending, as before, is we are going to shift our aggregate demand curve out to here. And we know this because, well, let's let's write this relation down again, that our aggregate demand is consumption plus investment plus government spending. So if we increase government spending, we are going to increase aggregate demand and it will shift by this change in government spending. However, again, as we had in the permanent increase, we do have to increase taxation. And so this is going to decrease our aggreg aggregate demand in a similar way to what we said in the previous permanent increase in government spending. However, this is different. And it may not be completely obvious why it is different, but we can explain why here. So what we are effectively doing in this situation is we are increasing our lump sum taxation in period one, but we are keeping it the same in period two, the same in period three, and so on. We, we're probably just gonna assume a two period model. Uh, so, okay, let's just say we keep it, we keep taxation the same in period two. So, okay. Now, this is a change in our present value income by increasing taxation or lump sum taxation. We are decreasing the present value of income for someone. And in the permanent income or the permanent increase in government spending example, this meant that we increased taxation in both periods. And so we decreased present value income by a certain amount. However, in this example, we are increasing our 
present or we are decreasing our present value income by a slightly lower amount and even more than that we are decreasing uh, our income in period one but we are keeping it effectively the same in period two so what we are going to do is we're going to smooth our consumption over time we're going to take some of that period two income and move it into period one so that we can smooth consumption as we said our preference relation we said this long ago we prefer combinations of things to having just lots of stuff of one or lots of one thing and not a lot of the other thing so our preference relation says that we'd rather spread our consumption over time so our consumption doesn't actually fall by all that much here due to the change in tax revenue for one because we are only increasing taxes in one period so our present value of income doesn't fall by as much as it did before but the main reason why this doesn't shift back as much as government spending changes is that we want to smooth our consumption over time so we do not decrease our consumption by that much our curve only shifts back to this point okay we are now at this equilibrium and we have a similar effect to the previous example with a permanent change in government spending that we now shift our supply curve and again this is for a very similar reason I, I drew this diagram where we had consumption and labor our budget constraint and we were optimizing and this is however just in period one now because this is a temporary increase we've only increased government spending in period one and our change in tax in period one again we move to some new equilibrium and what do you know we have increased our labor supply and so this has given us this shift in supply here and again as we had in the previous example this increase in labor supply is going to mean that we increase our wages a little bit because this is a compensation for the fact that we have lower incomes so we are increasing the amount of labor we do or amount of labor we supply to the market and so we get paid for this and we increase our income we increase our income we're going to increase our consumption so we end up shifting our demand curve for a final time to this new curve because we've increased our consumption after increasing our present value of income so this is our temporary increase in government spending this is our new equilibrium that i will do in bold again to make it clear where we are now these curves are not very good and that blue line should have just gone over the red line but you know that it illustrates the point well enough so our new equilibrium is around about here and we have a new interest rate and a new level of output so what has changed we have increased our interest rate and we have increased our output this is obviously different to it with the permanent increase because we said we will keep the interest rate the same because we're not altering intertemporal choices but now with a temporary increase in government spending we obviously are changing intertemporal choices because we have an asymmetric impact on each period period one and future periods which we could say just period one and two um why why does the interest rate actually increase well it is because of this thing that i was discussing before this consumption smoothing where we want to transfer some of our income from period two into period one so that we can smooth our consumption because our tax has increased in period one so we have a lower income and we want to spread some of our income from period two and how do we move our income from period two to period one we borrow we increase our consumption in period one higher so our consumption in period one will be higher than our income in period one and the only way we can do that is we borrow against our future income and if you increase borrowing 
in a market, you're going to have to increase the price of borrowing, which is the interest rate. So the interest rate rises to clear the money market. And now this is getting out of our goods market into the money market, and this is how the interest rate is determined. So I won't go into too much detail onto that, into that even, but that's the basic intuition. That's why the interest rate increases when we have a temporary increase in government spending, but it stays the same when we have a permanent increase in government spending. Okay, so that just about wraps up this video. Make sure to check out the playlist for future videos, and the next one will be on the government still, but in the Keynesian model instead of the neoclassical model, which we looked at here. Uh, please do drop a like on this video if it was at all useful, and subscribe, of course, for plenty of future content.